Hey guys, what's going on? Michael White here, and this last month was awesome. I've been coding now for seven whole months. That's over half a year. And uh, I got my hands dirty this month. I worked with MongoDB, I worked with Express, I worked with PHP, I started using Bootstrap, all for the first time. And needless to say, it was a very back-end heavy month this month. And uh, right off the bat, I can say back-end work, I got a ton of respect for you devs out there that do that. Any dev out there that is doing the back-end grind, that shit is a grind. Kudos to you. It took me seven months to get to the point where I'm comfortable enough with the basics to get like the front end of the page up working and operational. And it's crazy to think that used to be so hard, but now like if I need to get a page up and theme it, I can do it like that, especially with tools like Bootstrap. If you guys are interested in the first six months of this journey, I will have those videos posted in the details below. So check that out. But yeah, let's get into the month. I've learned more in this last month than probably any time in the whole learning process so far, honestly. And it's because I've constantly been pushing myself out of my comfort zone when I'm building projects. And it all started, it all started with an attempt to build a social media clone. That somehow snowballed into me learning Bootstrap, and then learning more Firebase, and then building a website for someone else completely, for like their business, and then jumping into learning Express and PHP, and all of this stuff without even starting the social media clone, all right? It's been a wild month. PHP was a pain in the ass, by the way. Like, it was very, very hard to get the developer environment set up and going with uh, XLAMP, I believe. I struggled with that. Maybe I'm just slow or suck at using Linux, but that was hard, man. I also started a job hunt this month. Woo, pop the fireworks, boys. So I'm currently working on updating my resume and my portfolio, and I'm doing something very cool with my resume. But that's a later video. Uh, if you guys stick around, maybe I'll give you a small sneak peek, very tiny. If you guys want to see my plan for the job hunt process, I made a video detailing almost everything I'm doing. I'll have that posted down in the description below as well, so feel free to check that out. So when I started the social media clone, I instantly realized that I was like depths out of my league. Like that was, that was a lot to take on. So during the planning process, I was thinking about how to approach it and what I'd need to learn. And the first thing I wanted to do is not have to worry about the UI. So I decided to learn Bootstrap. Right? So then I made a small bootstrap project, was playing with that, getting used to how the cards set, uh, you know, the, the breakpoints for the screen size, the responsiveness and everything. And bootstrap is very simple to use. So I decided to use bootstrap. And then once I got bootstrap down, I decided to make another test project using bootstrap, but then implementing user authentication and working with a backend or working with Firebase as the backend to store pictures and comments. So then I made another small project and, um, with user authentication and photo saving and that good stuff. And then somehow during this process, word got out what I was doing. And my first client came up to me and asked me to make a website for him, for his company. So of course I'm gonna do that. So I kind of paused those two projects and started working on the um, his website. And then I came across another problem that he has a form on his website and I don't know how to handle forms yet. So, I looked into using Firebase to do that, and it is possible, but the more I looked into using Firebase for it, the more I wanted to know how the whole process worked, you know? I'm like, I'm a circular learner. I like to learn the big picture and then fill in the middle, right? If that makes sense. So I like, I like it Firebase as being like a, like a solution. It's like a very small piece within the circle, right? But I want to know the whole circle. So I heard PHP was the best form handling language to use and use on landing pages all the time. So I tried to learn some PHP. I spent like an hour a night doing that for a while. And I remember I made a tweet about it. And somebody replied to my tweet asking me, have I started the node portion of the Odin project? And that was like when I had my aha moment, because here I am trying to learn back in from some um, Udemy video when the Odin project Personally, my personal preference is a far superior source for learning like anything that it offers because because of the structure of the curriculum and the way the course is. So I was like, what am I doing? So then I started the node portion of the Open project and started working through those first couple of projects. So now I'm working on learning the back end process and trying to get to the point where I can handle forms. And luckily there's not a big rush on my website for my first client. So they're cool about that. They know I'm learning and I'm figuring out the back end stuff. So it's a win-win for everybody. And with that out the way, let's take a look at the projects. 
All right, here we have the first project. This was my experimental bootstrap and Firebase learning project here. So I'm still toying with bootstrap and how the cards work, how everything places in this project, as well as integrating Firebase and user authentication into it. So we can log in here. Now we're logged in, it says hello Vesper, that's the name I decided to use here. We go to our profile, we have our user profile picture which we uploaded, and our information is there. From here we can change our profile picture, update it, and then it'll all display. But yeah, that was it. I pretty much just did this little test project here to work on user authentication and uploading pictures and data and saving that data and being able to pull it, otherwise known as post and get. I should have said that in the first place, that's so much easier to say. Posting information and getting information, Hey. All right. Next we have the project I started working on for a client. Obviously, I edited out some info and changed a few things. So this isn't like the official site, but it's close enough. Like this is like a, this is a demo version I'm gonna use in my portfolio, essentially. So here we have the company logo up there. You land on this page right here with this nice little greeting picture. I mean, it's a, it's a carpet cleaning company. Look how fitting these images are, right? Oh my God, my stock image finding skills are on point. Look at this, oh my, oof. Ooh, look at the box shadow. If you guys watched my six month video, this is, this is it. This is it. Now I need to find a bigger picture here for the pet noter part, but everything looks pretty good. Look at this, oh man. Oh, the reviews. The logo down here, link to the Facebook site, and then location's gonna go here. I'm gonna have like a little G Google Maps um, location area down here. I don't know how to do that yet, that's why it's not there. And then, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The schedule's right here, I'm, I'm hiding, I'm blocking the schedule so you can call and contact them, but yeah, we have the about. Now, the about I haven't filled in too much. There's some generic pictures in there. These are Pixum pictures, but they actually are high quality because I figured out how to size a Pixum picture. If you guys don't know what Pixum is, it's a website that will give you um, like stock photos, like you type in the dimensions and they give you stock photos at that dimension. Again, that's called Pixum. I'll have a link to that below if you guys ever wanna check that out and use placeholders for stock photos. But this is the basic layout here. We still got the footer down there. We got the specials. Each of these pictures is gonna be a coupon right here. Coupon, coupon, coupon. How do you guys say that? Coupon? So this form that pops up here, when you click the request service button, you can fill all these fields in, but when you click, uh, it's gonna be submit down here, not closed. You know, the information doesn't go anywhere because there's no, there's no server side back end for it. So this is what started this little, this little pop-up window right here. This little modal is what started this whole back end learning process. All right. It all started here. And also one cool thing I want to show you guys when you shrink the window, watch this, watch this. Boom, look at that. So if you're looking at it from a phone or a tablet or a smaller device, the little button down there becomes a like Insta communication button. You can click on that red, it'll call the number and the phone number is always present. It's pretty cool. All right, and here we have the very first MongoDB slash Express app that I've made. And I need you guys to bear with me on this one. I know it looks absolutely dreadful. All right, I didn't know anything about views or how to use Pug to style the HTML, nothing. If you guys don't know what views are and you're, you've never worked with MongoDB or um, Express, views are pretty much the HTML templates that are generated. And um, yeah, you do them in a language called Pug. <laughs> so there, there was some learning going on here and uh, everything's like a little different. It's a little. To me, it was tricky at first. I really didn't know what was going on for like the first hour. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. You see it's just a simple message board. You got the message board up here, the title, hello world. And when you click uh, speak your mind right here, we get a 404. Hold on, hold on, I know what's going on. I know what's wrong with this, watch this. <laughs> All right, so to get this to work for the video, this is my cat Moogle, y'all. Say hi, guys. I call her Moomoo. She twitches. She actually has a twitch. She's been like this uh, her whole life. She's neurological. But yeah, that's Moomoo. So um, to get this to work, because I have a project currently running on localhost, localhost, localhost 3000, I changed it 
what I thought was globally to localhost uh, 3005, but apparently I have to change that myself before it puts this new afterwards. So we're okay. Uh, I'm not gonna bother updating that right now. I'm gonna switch it back afterwards. But when you post your message here, um, new message here with your username, cool guy. I'm a pretty cool guy, let's be honest. You post it, boom, we get our cool guy message right there on localhost 3005. So if I wanted to fix this, I'd need to make it go to port 3005 instead of 3000. Easy fix. But that's that, that's all it does. It tells you the time. Um, first experience with posting Git, like on my own. It's pretty cool when you start wrapping your head around it all. And then for the last project, everything just got super, super chaotic. And we have the local library. <laughs> So this was the first crud up I made uh, using MongoDB, Express, Mongoose is in here. So there's a lot of uh, backend technologies thrown in and Pug is used for the display. So the project is essentially a library with books, right? You can view all the books. These are all the books we have saved. You can view all the authors who are in there. Hey, look, there's Michael White. You can view the genres. You can view the book instances, right? And you can also add those. Like right now, if I want to create a new author, uh, we'll create um, test guy is his first name, uh, knows best is his last name, death date, this random day in April of 2022. Submit that, test guy knows best, boom, lifespan right there, the author is set. Now if we go to all authors, test guy knows best is right here. And if we want to delete that author, all you have to do is go in, test guy knows best, and he has no books. If he had books, they'd be displayed here and we can delete author. If you guys wanna see, it's gonna ask you, do you really wanna delete? Yes, boom, and now he's gone forever. Now, if you click on the individual author, you'll see their books. I put those new books in to have cool summaries, if you can't tell. Look at Boba Bin, here's his books, and you can click on the book, and when you click on the book, you'll get the details. So, pretty cool. First ever CRUD app that I've made, like, with a back end. Now, I did do this with the help of a tutorial. Don't think I started and did this by myself, or I'd be inspired to make a library, but, um, this was still a beast, man. Now, if you guys made it this far in the video, I told you I'd show you a little sneak peek of what I'm working on for my uh, my next resume project. All I'm gonna do is show you guys just a quick look, a quick look at the, a, a quick look. We'll do five seconds. You guys ready? And there it is. That's all I'm gonna say about it for now. All in all, month seven was very productive learned a ton, made a ton. Um, I really like Bootstrap. I wanna try Tailwind out. Like going forward, Tailwind might be something I, I give an honest go. But for now, my projects are gonna center around Bootstrap. Um, and I'm really looking forward to learning how to integrate React with um, MongoDB and Express. You know, the whole Mern stack. Once I can incorporate React in there and see how that works, I can go back to my client's webpage and finish that form submission. And then from there on, nothing can stop me, man. I can build whatever I want, whatever I want. So I think I'm gonna wrap that one up here. Um, all in all, a really great month. We're almost at 200 subscribers now, so thank you guys. If you watched all the way to this point, thank you for watching. Thank you guys for joining, jumping along the ride. And I hope you guys are having fantastic results with your learning and your own personal journey as well. Have you guys taken anything new on in the last month? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.